In Splatoon 2, Tenta missiles were everywhere. Weapons like the Foil Flingza Roller, Vanilla Jet Squelcher, and Kensa Splatter Shot were all pretty valued on a competitive team for playing a supportive role that painted well and farmed for a lot of missiles. On certain maps and modes, it got pretty ridiculous, with some top players channeling their inner flyfish having a way higher special output than KA and still getting value out of it. It was an oppressive strategy to play against, with so much of your time in-game spent just making sure to keep yourself safe from the next barrage. The developers made a wise decision being very careful about which weapons got missiles in Splatoon 3, and gave the special one of the best nerfs I've ever seen in the Splatoon series. They made it so that your special meter can't start filling up again until the missiles are done landing. That slows down the output substantially. Flingza Roller has still seen some use as a flex option for anchors, but GooTuber got tried for a little and then people decided it wasn't really a viable main weapon at top level. And Reflux isn't unheard of, but it's niche since the missile spam playstyle is nerfed, and nobody has pushed the weapon far enough to convince me that the main weapon is strong enough in combat to make up for it. Now though, we have the Wiper Deco, which while not a portable missile silo like the Reflux, is aggressive enough a weapon that it can actually follow up on its missiles when they launch. This is one of the key parts of the Kensa Splattershot's strategy from Splatoon 2, part of what made it so versatile, able to switch between support and slayer at the drop of a bottle rocket, and be pretty strong in both roles. Wiper Deco is certainly different. Its main weapon isn't anywhere near as reliable at slaying as a Splattershot, with very low DPS outside of melee range. It also doesn't have a bomb to poke with or defend with or set up traps with, though the main weapon's range makes up for this a little bit. Still, missiles are more a part of Splatoon 3 than they ever have been now, so I'm starting to see a lot more solo queue players who never went through the bombardment that was endgame competitive Splatoon 2, making a lot of mistakes when targeted that are below their pay grade compared to their other skills and decision making. Let's go over how to not splat yourself or your teammates with Tenta missiles. The most important thing to understand about missiles is this. Once you reach a certain level of skill, missiles are not going to splat anyone by themselves. Maybe as a brand new player, there are some times where you're just visually overwhelmed, but even by the time players hit B and C rank, they're getting pretty good at not staying on the scary video game warning circle long enough to get splatted. If anything, they're a lot more likely to get splatted because they didn't paint their feet in time, or because they got splatted by their teammates' missiles, which they had less time to notice and react to. In order for missiles to be especially dangerous, there needs to be pressure on the targeted player from multiple sources. The player needs to be hopping out of the frying pan into the fire, not hopping out of the frying pan onto the countertop to safety. There has to be something that makes it too dangerous to stay in a particular place on the map. If I'm missiled right here, and everything else around me is painted my color, I can just swim out of there. If I'm missiled here and everything isn't painted my color, but I have enough ink to paint my feet, I can still just get out of there. But if I'm missiled here and there's someone shooting at me from here, there's a bomb here, there's someone else shooting at me from here, I don't have anywhere safe to go. The missiles are making it so I have to move, but with nowhere else I can go to get away from them, the missiles are either going to splat me or put me in a place where something else will splat me. That's the danger of missiles, of having no good escape options. It's rare in top-level competitive play that someone will actually get splatted by the Tenta Missile's projectile. But even when managed well, missiles will often force a team to back up, because that's their only option for avoiding all the pressure their opponents try to apply while the missiles are out. Forcing the enemy team to back up means you've gained map control, and you're a step closer to being able to play the objective and score points, so it's still valuable, even if it doesn't increase the player's KA. In solo queue, however, people often don't manage missiles well at all, and due to tactical blunders, players will actually go down to missiles or cause their teammates to go down to them. I can't give you an easy way to fend off a coordinated special push by an experienced competitive team, but I can teach you how not to trap yourself or your teammates and give your opponent a way bigger reward than they deserve just for pressing the right stick. One aspect of avoiding getting splatted by missiles is very similar to avoiding getting splatted by a booyah bomb, which is that the sooner you respond to them, the better. 
continuing to play until there are lethal projectiles falling from the sky and only then changing tactics will get you stuck in ways that you don't have to get stuck if you come up with a plan sooner. Oftentimes, you can see the player pulling out the special before they target anything, or see at the top of the screen that the special has been used and preemptively get yourself into a position where you're ready to manage them. Another commonality with avoiding Booyah Bombs is that you always want at least two safe escape routes. If you only give yourself one way out, it's way too easy for an opponent to, say, pre-fire your escape route or put a bomb there, trapping you between two things that make you blow up. A lot of times, as a Kensa Splattershot player, I would throw a bomb next to where the missile's locked on without even being able to see the opponent, because I knew that was the most likely direction they'd want to run away from the missiles. You also need to factor in other issues, like a teammate cutting off your first choice of escape routes with the missiles that are targeting them. Managing the number of escape options means reducing how engaged you are with the enemy team, because someone shooting at you or throwing bombs at you is a source of pressure that reduces the escape routes you have available and forces you to move in ways that may not be conducive to avoiding the missiles. When the missiles are on you, the best case scenario is for nothing to happen while they're falling and only to re-engage the enemy team after they fall when your opponent won't have an advantage in that engagement anymore. Backing up away from the enemy team is often the best idea because it prevents them from applying pressure to as much of the space around you. You do have the option to move forward toward the enemy team instead, but this is almost always the worst possible option. You have to remember that missiles put paint on the ground when they land. If you're targeted, you move forward into range of the enemy team, and then the missiles fall behind you. Now the spot you were standing on before is painted thoroughly in the enemy's color, and you can't back up the way you came. You're trapped in that engagement. You're on the opposite side of the missiles from where your teammates most likely ran, and it's not like the opposing side won't see you coming because missiles mark your position for them. There are few ways to isolate yourself into a losing fight more thoroughly or efficiently than that. What you can do, though, is move forward a little while the missiles are targeting you, and then back up only after they start falling. This way, when you back up, instead of losing ground overall, you'll be closer to where you were before the missiles were used, because they're falling further forward than you wanted to stand anyway. In a similar way, it can be valuable to use your positioning to control where missiles end up landing to move them away from the rest of your team, or off the splat zone or other objective. It's also useful to remember that when missiles target you, they don't all lock on at the same time. If you're moving while the missiles target you, they'll land more spread out, which is usually something you want to avoid if you can help it. Each individual missile is potentially lethal, so it's not like spreading them out will reduce the damage any one spot takes. In fact, it'll only increase it, because now there's an even wider radius around which there's indirect damage. They're also going to paint more of the ground and take up more space, making it more difficult for you and your teammates to find turf your color to swim through and escape or fight after the missiles land. In the absence of pressure from the enemy team, I'll move forward a little bit, stay still to let the missiles lock on in a clump, and then back up so they overlap each other as much as possible, and I get to keep my positioning as much as possible. If I have a teammate nearby, I'll move a little bit away from them, telegraphing where I'm going to move when they actually start to fall. Ideally, I'll create so much space from my teammate that when the missiles fall, there's still space available in between the turf painted by my missiles and the turf painted by their missiles, so that if we need to swim in between the two of us, we still have room to do that. Then, once the missiles are locked on, I'll move away from the teammate, being careful to watch where they go so that our paths don't cross. The worst thing you can do here is run behind a teammate while the missiles are locking on, especially if they're a slower fire rate weapon like a Hydra or Dynamo. These weapons take a significant amount of time longer to paint their feet than most, and they can be easily trapped if teammates are too careless about moving behind them and putting missiles in places they're not going to see until it's too late. Now sometimes things can get hairy enough that there is only one viable escape route, but you're right next to a teammate with their own missiles also locking on. In this case, what has to happen is for both of you to take that escape route at the same time. The missiles will land at the same time, so if you stay right on top of each other, 
both of your missiles will land in the same place, and you'll both get away from that place together. This definitely shouldn't be your first choice for how to handle missiles, since all it takes is a little pressure from the enemy team and now you're two down, but it is a tool in your box, and it can save you sometimes. One last thing we haven't talked about is the other advantage of missiles, the information they give the enemy team. Experienced players play very differently when they're marked by a point sensor or something. I'd like to point out that in other shooters, being able to see other players through walls is a common way to cheat when you're hacking the game. It's that powerful to be able to see someone that can't see you. Sitting in squid form in your ink isn't hiding you from anyone that way, so it really slows down an aggressive weapon trying to find splats on the enemy team, or makes a backliner think twice about staying in their spot and getting another charge ready. If there's even a single enemy player not accounted for, you need to paint extremely defensively to avoid getting sharked, because there are plenty of ways they can plan an ambush. Especially in coordinated teams or in high-level solo queue, when missiles go out, the enemy team is going to recognize that advantage state and want to push. They're especially going to want to push an enemy player who was, up until this point, sharking to try and get close to them undetected, or a player who's standing right next to a teammate limiting their escape options, or who continues moving forward even though the missiles are starting to fall. You have to remember that they can see that and act accordingly. This is not the time to launch a surprise attack, because you're not surprising anyone when you're marked by missiles. One of the other reasons I like to stay still while the missiles are targeting is so that I don't give my opponent, who can see me, an idea of where I'm planning on moving to avoid the missiles. If the missiles go out and I immediately start sprinting to my right, that gives my opponent more time to recognize my trajectory, anticipate where I'm going to be a second from now, and pressure that spot in some way. If I only move right as the missiles are falling, and the locating feature is timing out, they may know where I am now, but they probably don't have as good of an idea about where I'm going from there, and they don't have as much time to react to it. In some niche situations, it may actually be beneficial to use the information you know they're getting against them, since it's pretty clear when they have that information and when they don't. If you make it look like you intend on pushing the right side while the missiles are locked on, but then once the lock goes away you beeline the left side, you might fake them out and be somewhere they don't expect. You'll still want to consider the possible consequences of spreading missiles out by moving, but it's important to be thinking about all the available options and not just responding in a predictable way to the special every time, because players can catch on over the course of a match if you have habits. Now that I've got you playing 4D chess, let's drop it back a dimension for a second, and remember that there are also some ways you can position so you don't have to deal with the missiles at all. If there's a grate or a platform above your head, you're safe. Missiles don't go through those. If you're right up next to a ledge, sometimes missiles clustering around your position will land on the ledge above you, or if you're on top of it, overshoot you and land below you. This is important to remember not just for using this map geometry to shield you, but also so that you remember to check the ground beneath you for missile lock-on markers before you drop off a ledge and land without enough time to avoid them. Cool. Now, none of my teammates are allowed to splat me with their missiles ever again. That's how that works, right? Right? Right?